say that sometimes, when dealing with King Tyrannus or Queen Andreas, their presence overwhelms humans. Princess Meredith, being part human, though beautiful, he nodded in my direction. I nodded at the compliment. He continued, had never affected anyone so strongly. But a lot has been happening in the Ancilly Court in the last few days. Ambassador Stevens has filled me in, and other sources as well. Princess Meredith and some of her guard have moved up the power grid, so to speak. The duty still looked tired, but now his eyes showed the mind inside that overweight, overworked camouflage. I realized with a start that there were other dangerous, dangers besides ambition. The duty was smart, and hinted he knew something about what had happened inside the Ancilly Court. Did he know, or was he fishing? Did he think we'd give something away? It is illegal to use glamour on us, Shelby said angry. He looked at me now, and it was no longer the least friendly. I looked back. I gave him the full force of my tricolored eyes, molten gold at the outer edge, then a circle of jade green and last emerald to chase around my pupil. He looked away first, dropped his gaze to his own legal pad. His voice came out squeezed tight with controlled rage. We could have you arrested or deported back to Ferry for trying to use magic to sway those, these proceedings, Princess. I'm not doing anything to you, Mr. Shelby, not on purpose. I looked at Viducci. Mr. Viducci, you say that simply seeing my aunt and uncle was difficult, am I difficult now? From my colleagues' reactions, I believe you are. So this is the reaction that King Tyrannus and Queen Andreas have on humans. Similar, Zucci said. I had to smile. This is not funny, Princess Cortez said, his words full of anger, but when I met his brown eyes, they dropped from me. I looked at Pamela Nelson, but it wasn't me she was having trouble not being fascinated with. Her problem was behind me. Which one are you staring at the most, I asked, frost or dull, dark or light? She blushed in that pretty way human redheads have. I'm not. Come, Miss Nelson, confess which one. <laughs> <laughs> she swallowed hard enough I heard it. Oh, she whispered. We will charge you and these two guards with undue magical influence and legal proceeding, Princess Meredith, the princess said. I agree, Shelby said. Neither I nor Frost and Dole are doing this on purpose. We're not stupid, Shelby said. Glamour is an act of magic, not a passive one. Most glamour, yes, but not all, I said. I looked down the table at the Ducci. They put him farthest from the center of the table as if being from St. Louis made him less. Or maybe I was just overly sensitive for my hometown. Did you know, the Ducci said, when you see the Queen of England, they call it being in the presence. I've never met Queen Elizabeth, and I'm not likely to, so I don't know how it works for her. I've never spoken to a human queen, but the phrase in the presence, to be in the presence of the queen, means more than it's the queen of the unsealy court. To be in the presence of the king of the sealy court is also a treat. What does that mean, Cortez asked, a treat? It means, gentlemen and ladies, that being king or queen and fairy gives you an unconscious aura of power, of attractiveness. You live in L.A., you see that it works in lesser ways for major stars or politicians. Power seems to breed power. Dealing with the fairy courts has made me believe that even us poor humans do it. To be powerful, rich, beautiful, talented, whatever. It isn't just human nature to suck up. I think it's glamour. I think that success of a certain level has a glamour to it. And you attract people to you. They want to be around you. They listen to you more. They do what you say more. Humans have a shadow of real glamour. Now think about someone who is the most powerful figure in fairy. Think about the level of power surrounding them. Ambassador Stevens, Prescott said, should you have been the one that warned us about this effect? Stephen smoothed his tie down, played with the Rolex watch Tyrannus had given him as a present. King Tyrannus is a powerful figure with centuries of rulership. He does have a certain ability that is impressive. I have not found Queen Andreas as impressive. Because you only talked to her from a distance over the mirrors with Team Tyrannus by your side, Paducci said. I was impressed that Paducci knew that because it was absolutely true. You're the ambassador to Ferry, Prescott said, not just to the Sealy Court. I'm the United States ambassador to the Courts of Ferry, yes. But you never stepped foot into the Unsealy Court, Prescott asked. Um... Stephen said, running his fingers over and over the watch band. I find Queen Andiaeus a little less than cooperative. <laughs> what does that mean? Prescott said. I watched him play with the watch, and a tiny bit of concentration showed that there was magic on it, or in it. I answered for him. It means he thinks the unsilly court is full of perversion and monsters. They were all looking at him now. If it had been purposeful glamour on our part, they wouldn't have. Is that true, Ambassador? Prescott asked. I would never say such a thing. But he believes it, I said softly. We'll all make a note of this and make sure the proper authorities know of your gross dereliction of your duties, Prescott said. I am loyal to King Tyrannus and his court. It is not my fault that Queen Andreas is a sexual sadist and quite mad. <laughs> she and her people are dangerous. I have said so for years. No one has listened to me. Now we have these charges proving what I've been saying. So you told your superiors that you feared the Queen's guard would rape someone, the Duchy asked. Well, I... No, not exactly. What did you tell them, Prescott asked. I told them the truth, that I feared for my safety at the Unsilly Court, and I would not be comfortable there without an armed escort. Stephen stood up, very tall, very certain of himself. He pointed at Frost and Dole. Look at them, they are frightening. The potential in them to do carnage I just radiates off of them. You keep touching your watch, I said. What? He blinked at me. Your watch. King Tyrannus gave it to you, didn't he? I asked. You accepted a Rolex watch from the king? Cortez made it a question. He sounded outraged, but not at us. Stephen swallowed and shook his head. Of course not, that would be totally inappropriate. 
I saw him give it to you, Ambassador, I said. He ran his fingers over the metal. That's simply not true. She's lying. But she don't lie, Ambassador. You know that. That's a human habit. Stephen's fingers were practically rubbing a hole through the watch band. The Amstiller are capable of every evil. Their very faces show them for what they are. It was Pamela Nelson who said, their faces are beautiful. You are fooled by their magic, Stephen said. The king gave me the power to see through their deceptions. His voice was rising with each word. The watch, I said. So this shall be gestured to me. Beauty is illusion? Yes, Stephen said. No, I said. Liar, he screamed, shoving his chair back so that it rolled on its wheels. He started walking past Biggs and Farmer towards me. Dole and Frost moved like two halves of a hole. They simply stood in front of him, blocking his way. There was no magic to it, except the force of their physicality. Stephen stumbled back from them as if he'd been struck. His face contorted in terror. He cried, no, no. Some of the boys were standing now. Cortez said, what are they doing to him? The duchy managed to yell above Stephen's scream. I can't see anything. We are doing nothing to him, Dole said. His deep voice cutting under the higher-pitched voices like water under a cutting a cliff face. The hell you aren't, Shelby yelled, adding to the noise of Stephen's screams and the yelling of the others. I tried yelling above the noise. Turn your jackets inside out. No one seemed to hear me. The Ducci bellowed, Shut up! In a voice that smashed the noise like a bull through a fence. The room was stunned into silence. Even Stephen stopped screaming and stared at the Ducci. 